Hi guys, this is Jason on the comment. I'm here with a review of the Motorola DeFi 2021. So it was about 10 or 11 years ago when Motorola launched a phone called Motorola DeFi. It was a rugged device and their attempt at conquering a pretty small niche back then. What followed was a series that included the Motorola DeFi Mini, DeFi XT and DeFi uh, Pro with a QWERTY keyboard. Now in 2021, the DeFi series is back under the shape of this smartphone, which offers a mid-range experience, a triple back camera and also a rather large battery. The handset is priced at around $350 to $400. It's a rugged phone with military specs, IP68 and a few other features like a programmable button on the side. Let's see what it has to offer in the review. Okay, so first things first, it's available in black or green. It has an interesting pattern at the back side and it's a striped pattern as you can see. The device is made of plastic, reinforced plastic all over the place and some rubber plus a um, slightly lifted texture here which increases the grip quite a bit. Also important, uh, usually flagship phones have Gorilla Glass Victus protection for the screen. This one is one of the cheapest, if not the cheapest phone on the market with Gorilla Glass Victus protection. Now, as far as measurements are concerned, it's a big device, a beefy device, but for good reason, it's more resilient. 10.9 millimeters in thickness, 232 grams in weight, but somehow it doesn't feel hefty in my hand. I found it quite easy to handle and use on a day-to-day -day basis even with a single hand now what it can resist are the following things so i would mention first and foremost the fact that uh, it resists uh, dust and water it has the ip68 certification you can drop it on concrete up to 1.8 meters in height uh, it can also resist uh, repeated falls on its sides and corners and uh, aside from that it can take um, temperature changes something like 55 degrees celsius plus minus 25 degrees celsius humidity even uh, salt water vapors so there's that we have a special hole here for a lanyard and uh, we have uh, this power button which is slightly ribbed in order to be found more easily and also the sides are raised so when you're dropping the screen face first when you're dropping the phone face first the screen will be definitely protected and to be honest, it feels more elegant than the average rugged phone if you look at it like this. Now we go further and we're going to talk about the screen. What we're dealing with here is a 6.5 inch IPS LCD with a teardrop notch at the top side and a pretty big chin at the bottom. Uh, it has an HD resolution, actually HD+, and to be honest, it's not very bright, but let's let a video confirm that. Uh, it's our typical video playback sample. And the image can be enjoyed like this. As you can see here, there's a bit of asymmetry, rounded corner, rounded corner, rounded corner, and angular corner here. A big chin and a pretty protruding notch. But as far as the screen itself is concerned, I would say that the colors are decent. They're pretty correctly calibrated. The screen isn't very bright. I mean, indoors it's okay, but outdoors it may not be enough on a sunny day. And the contrast is rather poor. Uh, the view angles were pretty okay in my book, not the widest in the world, but still doing that job if you're looking at the screen from an angle. The pixels have an RGB stripes arrangement, and when it came to the actual measurement we did with the lux meter, things weren't that good. Uh, as you can see here, we achieved 234 lux units, which is definitely not flattering. It's actually on the bottom of the hierarchy, 425th spot. Still, it's below the Motorola Moto G50 and the Xperia E4, but below the CAT phones, the Caterpillar rugged phones we tested, CAT S61, CAT S42, and the CAT S62 Pro, for example. So that's it as far as the screen is concerned. Now let's move forward. Now let's talk about the innards of the phone and I'm going to start off with the processor. You've maybe seen it before. It's the Qualcomm Snapdragon 662. It's an 11 nanometer octa-core chip with which, which was unveiled in January 2020. It's a pretty modest choice. You can see it on the Motorola Moto G9 Power and the Nokia 5.4. In the current case, it's accompanied by 4 gigs of RAM and also 64 gigabytes of storage plus a micro SD card slot. 
Now the device, as long as we used it, didn't suffer from lag or any sort of freezing or any sort of uh, performance problem, but it's definitely not a gaming device. I mean, if you really want to, you can play Asphalt 9 on it, but don't expect uh, the top frame rate to always be there and also the uh, flawless experience. And PUBG will also stutter probably and be played on lower details. Now, as far as the benchmarks are concerned, uh, we kept expectations pretty low and let's see what came out of that. This is Antutu 8 and the associated results. Things to remember here, we beat Samsung Galaxy A51 and Motorola Moto G30 as well as the Xperia 10 Mark II. We scored below the Poco M3, which is not flattering, and below the Vivo Y70. In Geekbench 5, here we are with a multi-core subtest. Just a smidge above Poco M3 and Cat S62 Pro, which is more relevant, plus the Motorola Moto G9 Power. We're below the Oppo Reno 4 Lite and the Galaxy A32 5G, while 3D Mark, which is a gaming benchmark, is obviously not flattering in this case. At least we beat Vivo Y70 and Poco M3, uh, while at the same time surpassing the Galaxy A31. We stayed below the Motorola Moto G30, Cat S62 Pro and Oppo Reno 4 Lite. So we're about... Uh, at a similar level of performance with the Galaxy A51 and uh, around the values of the Poco M3, if not a bit better. Which is, uh, it doesn't, uh, doesn't exactly mean it's a high performing phone, it only does its necessary tasks, which have to do more with the design and resilience. As far as the temperature is concerned, in benchmarks we never got higher than 34.6 degrees Celsius. In games, 32.1 degrees Celsius and once again, no overheating here. One of the core selling points of the phone, which Motorola promises, is the fact that, uh, well, we're dealing with a 5000 mAh battery here with 20 watt charging. On paper, we're being promised 2 days of usage, 2 days of battery life. But let's leave the paper behind and let's see what we got here. So when it comes to the video playback, I'm satisfied to show you this result, 15 hours and 57 minutes. It's actually quite good above the uh, Redmi 10 5G, uh, or better said the Redmi Note 10 5G, also the Oppo Reno 5 Lite, Huawei P40 Lite and Poco X3 NFC. Uh, it's below the Redmi Note 9 Pro, the Cat S42 and the Vivo Y70. I'm less impressed by the continuous usage, which is 10 hours and 41 minutes, meaning that one intense day of usage may lead you to uh, look for the charger towards night time. So 10 hours and 41 minutes means we're surpassing the Galaxy A40, Nokia 6.2 and the Nokia X20. But we're below the cat phones, cat S52, cat S42 and a few other caterpillar rugged phones, which is pretty important because they're direct rivals. Charging is a bit on the long side, 2 hours and 40 minutes, we expected more from the 20 watt charger and after, let's see, 30 minutes is 30% and 1 hour is 56%, so maybe faster charging would be nice, maybe on the predecessor, excuse me, on the successor of the phone. When it comes to acoustics, we have a speaker right here, the only one, and an uh, audio jack at the top side. And if you want to listen to music, I have one sample prepared for you. It's here. Let's play it. Okay, so uh, I would say that the volume is quite high, to be honest, higher than expected. And if you want to do some tweaks, uh, there's no bass at its core level. But when you activate this option and activate bass punch and extreme bass, you will definitely increase it just a bit. So the voices are clear, the high notes are well rendered. Not much bass, but plenty of volume to go around. Which is partially confirmed by our volume test. So, uh, Volume test number one with acoustic sample, 82.8 decibels. What this means is that we beat the Xiaomi Mi 10T Lite and the Cat S61 rugged phone. At the same time, we scored below the Cat S52, S42 and the Oppo A15S. In games, we reached 98.4 decibels, pretty close to the threshold of 100 decibels, which we enjoy. Uh, this means we surpassed Cat S51, excuse me, Cat S61, and we also beat the Poco X3 Pro and Vivo Y70. We scored below the Galaxy A32 5G, Moto G30, and Huawei P40 Lite 5G. I would say it's a pretty okay experience, all in all, particularly the volume as we perceived it in real life. 
As far as the camera is concerned, for a rugged phone, you usually don't expect much from the cameras. Here we have an 8 megapixel shooter in a big teardrop notch for the selfies, and a triple back camera with the main sensor being a 48 megapixel one, which combines four pixels in one, accompanied by two 2 megapixel cameras, macro and bokeh. There's full HD capture here for video, 30 or 60 frames per second. We have the LED flash here, and aside from that, uh, we have a special stabilization option. Uh, we have a night mode even, and a few other useful features found in the camera UI, particularly in this area. So portrait, cutout, macro, spot color, night vision, cinemagraph, panorama, and live filter. And now I think it's time that we went to the gallery and showed you what we have here. Okay, so I'm going to show you a few pictures which were taken with this device. So first of all, let's check out those taken during the day. So I don't have too many objections if you stick to using the main 48 megapixel sensor. I mean the colors are fine and all, uh, but there's a bit too much exposure here, too much light being caught by the camera. And sometimes the clouds will look unrealistic, if you ask me. Okay, so let's turn down the volume a bit, see the videos later. Uh, the selfies are quite okay, I would say, for an 8 megapixel camera. They're tolerable for this resolution, but sometimes the bokeh doesn't cut it and when you're in the shade, there's a lot of noise and the details are unpresent for the face of the uh, photo subject. And as you can see here, the bokeh is unsure how to cut the eyeglasses on top of the head uh, from the background. But in general, for an 8 megapixel camera, for a mid-range phone, it delivers, I'm talking about the selfie camera only. Now, as far as the other photos are concerned, let's go further here and see what we got. Definitely not one of those devices which impresses when it comes to the zoom. So you can forget about zooming in, you won't be impressed. And we have here several attempts at creating close-ups or macros. After taking a few attempts, you may achieve something memorable, but you should stick with the close-ups with the main camera. They're more satisfying and the 2 megapixel ones have too low a resolution for me. Now, as you can see, the colors are spot on with the main camera, beautiful green, reds and the blues. So that's nice. And I would say that except for the exposure and the weird color of the clouds, I'm pretty happy with what the main camera can deliver. Uh, there's no ultra wide and the zoom is poor. Um, and uh, well, that's about everything I have to say here. So nice colors and close ups, which is something to remember about the phone. Those were daytime shots and when you come to the low light, uh, you'd better stick to the special night mode, otherwise you won't see too much out of your shots, even though the photos taken with the night mode tend to be a bit too lit up, too exposed, I mean uh, they capture too much light, but this helps you in one particular situation, like for example if you want to capture this column, as you can see the lights are too big and you won't see too many details on the column, with night mode, the lights have a decent size and you can actually see the architectural details of the column. That's one clear use of the night mode. We have several pictures which are good enough to be posted on social media, but once again, if you really plan on using the night mode, excuse me, the camera during the night, activate that option. Uh, okay, so that's pretty much it as far as the photos are concerned. I would say that we're slightly above the Poco M3, but nothing more flattering than that. And here we have the videos, seven of them. This one is the focus test, focusing on the foreground and the background. And I would say we're doing quite the good job. And by the way, I'm pretty happy with the colors here. I mean, the green checks out, but the green of the grass here in the background is a bit too intense for my liking. We have videos in 30 frames per second and those in 60 frames per second. I found those in 30 frames per second to be better stabilized and clearer, but those with 60 frames are more suited to action situations. As you can see, not much stabilization here. Things are pretty shaky, but at least they're not shaky when you're panning. That's something to remember. Now, as I'm actually surprised by the 8 megapixel selfie camera. It delivers uh, higher than my expectations, which were pretty low. So that's something to remember if you're planning on vlogging at some point during your rugged day-to-day -day use of the phone. It's even more shots here and once again a stabilization test, which is not very flattering. Okay, and we have one more video here. We're still in Full HD and the uh, zoom is a bit underwhelming. We don't have 4K, 
that's for sure. And the colors are, I would say, um, damaged by the quantity of light captured here and there's too much exposure. Now that we're done with the camera, we're actually not done. We have one more video. This one is the low light one and it's definitely not usable and not postable on social media. I mean, it's too dark, it's constantly refocusing, it's noisy and uh, you're probably not going to enjoy what's captured during the nighttime with the phone in video mode. We proceed further and talk about other things. I'm talking about connectivity. So this one is obviously only a 4G phone, doesn't have 5G. It comes with the nano SIM card slots and also delivers, uh, aside from 4G, it has a uh, dual band Wi-Fi. It also has, aside from dual band Wi-Fi, GPS, NFC, a USB-C 2.0 port at the bottom and uh, audio jack and Bluetooth 5.0. The calls are actually pretty loud and clear, actually uh, louder than you'd expect. And we also did a bunch of speed tests, so let's see how that played out. So we go here, and these are the results we achieved. In short, as far as the 4G is concerned, we're at the 113 mega per second download mark and 52.2 mega per second upload, and for Wi Fi, 278 mega per second downloads and 312 mega per second uploads. I would say we're doing fine. What's a bit underwhelming is the fact that even though we're running a clean software, which is Android here, it's sadly only Android 10, it's not Android 11. As usual, the experience is left pretty stock and Motorola only contributes with this section called My UX. You can personalize your experience with styles, wallpapers and layout, custom colors, custom fonts, uh, icon shapes and uh, layout. Then there are the Moto Actions, which are basically gestures. Then we have the Moto Display, Peak Display and Tentative Display. And then we have the gaming features, believe it or not. Even though it's not a gaming phone, it has quite a few options in that regard. In order to block the distraction from the games. Here you have the programmable button, which is this one here, the extra button. And you can actually set it to push to talk and use your Moto Talk application uh, for a sort of uh, walkie-talkie like experience, which is useful if you're using the rugged phone in the forest or other areas. And you can also activate and select shortcuts associated to it, like the flashlight and more. And you can select what a long press does and what a double press does. Aside from that, there's the typical multitasking here with the option of uh, having a split screen. There's a drop down section with notifications and quick settings. We have do not disturb, nearby share and a bunch of audio effects. Of course, widgets are part of the experience, stock ones, so stock Android all the way. And if you want to talk about apps, I didn't find any bloatware here, only the core basic apps. I do have some tools installed here, but they're for diagnostics and sharing stuff with Motorola, like feedback and uh, bug hunting. That's pretty much it as far as the Motorola Defy 2021 is concerned. It has been built with the aid of the British company Bullet, who also makes rugged stuff for Land Rover and Caterpillar. Now, as far as the pros and cons are concerned, let's talk about those because we're at the end of the review. And here we go. On the pro side, a rugged phone, which still looks pretty nice. It has a pretty good price if you compare it to the Caterpillar phones. I would say that the battery is satisfying as far as the battery life is concerned. This speaker at the bottom is quite loud in real life. It's comfy to hold and wield. It doesn't feel as heavy as other rugged phones, which is very important. It has a pretty okay main camera, but only the main camera. And also I would mention that the connectivity is pretty fast and the interface is clean and stock. I almost forgot about the fingerprint scanner at the back side. Press it like this and the phone unlocks in a pretty efficient manner. Those are the pros. On the cons, I mean, the screen isn't very bright, that's for sure. It should and could have been brighter than the below 300 lux we achieved. Also, the processor inside is not exactly future-proof. I would also have to mention that the charging is quite long. The camera overall is a bit underwhelming, um, especially if you're talking about the exposure. And we only have Android 10 here. We would have loved to see Android 11 or at least an update shortly after the phone was launched. So in the end, this is a phone which can take a tumble and rumble and some water and dropping on concrete. It's made for people who don't have time to play games, take selfies, they want to work and also have a decent looking phone when they're leaving work. I'm talking about people who work in the forest, in the mine, in the mountains, on an oil rig, the petrochemical industry, basically 
tough jobs which require tough phones. Uh, one of them involves maybe being a pilot uh, on a rally car which means a lot of vibrations and not many phones can take vibrations nowadays. This one can take disinfectant and soap. With the current pandemic this is important to mention that you can wash it with disinfectant and soap and have it survive that. At the same time it's a pretty basic and one would even say low mid-range spec device which underwhelms us when it comes to the Android version and maybe the charging. But in the end, we're left with a solid battery life, a loud speaker and a totally rugged body which is easy to handle and that's pretty important. And finally, a price we can actually digest unlike the other rugged phones out there. This is it from gsnl.com. Hope you helped you uh, enjoy this device and understand it fully. Bye bye.